Yesterday I made a video about X and how X has now disbanded the likes or more more actually actually X has now disbanded the fact of looking at likes, getting likes and using them so you can see who likes things kind of on the outset, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, except in the process, the fact that most people can't see those likes, has also changed a lot of things that made them unable to actually pull down the analytics or what's going on. It's a bigger, I'll say conspiracy just because um, I think that Elon Musk is a conspiracy guy, but the biggest issue I have right now is that X is broken. X just doesn't work. It's that simple. X, uh, as you see in the picture here on the video, the, the headquarters of X, formerly the Twitter headquarters, now doesn't really work to any perfection. In fact, if you've been watching it for a while, Mark Hamill has essentially been broken by the platform as he's literally typing like on every single thing that he sees out there that he likes because he can't just click the like button. No one knows that Mark Hamill does that, which would be great if he likes some of my things, but it's also the largest faction. Now, the purpose of the non likes or people not seeing likes as i have said as people have speculated is that twitter is making a very very big overt move to allow more things that are considered pornographic not necessarily evil and bad but more things that are a bit more risque more skin more things like that and to save face they're allowing more people to like those things without having any sort of repercussions going forward i.e uh, you might scroll on something you may like something just at random and someone looks at it and say, oh, look, that conservative Christian porks uh, click that like on that one thing. So obviously he's a pedophile. He's probably not obviously a pedophile, but there you go. So here's the thing. X was proven right, essentially, one day after this, as this happened. Uh, I was in the car listening to Sirius XM and in the car going back and forth doing the Operation Chaos, going back for the house and the apartment, moving things back and forth. And on the radio, on the Sirius XM, is Aaron Burnett out front. I was not really paying attention to what was going on before. Then a phone call came in for a bit, so I was on the phone call. Then the phone call was over and I headed towards one area of town to the other area of town. So I had a good uh, 10 minutes to drive back and forth to take care of some stuff. And I listened to basically coming in on the very beginning of the the beginning of the actual um, uh, interview of the, of the segment. And this essentially proved the point, unfortunately, which was why, you know, I'm bitching and complaining about not having likes and not having a chance to pull down analytics. It was a takedown on this guy, J.D. Vance. It was an obvious takedown on J.D. Vance. It was just blat out a takedown. And what it was is something that the non-low news um, information of viewers know about J.D. Vance is that about 10 years ago when he wrote Hillbilly Elegy and I was talking about how the dangers of how people were getting sucked into not so much the Republican sort of mindset but the mindset that was going on in conservatives at the time and how J.D. Vance about six years after that when he started to run for uh, Senate changed his mind apologized to Donald Trump for saying that Trump was kind of a bad guy how he liked a bunch of treats, tweets that when they were called tweets that made Trump look like a bad guy because in character back then he was essentially sort of blasting the conservatives and so he was in character. He has done a complete 180 which is a whole nother thing and now is defending Trump to the um, to the high heavens. In fact he's on the short list they say for a vice presidential pick. He's probably not in that that top tier but he's probably in the six to seven eight range as somebody who's really really close based on what's going on. One of the biggest things is that J.D. Vance actually has a way of explaining things to people that sort of make sense and drawing his own crowds, which are things that Donald Trump doesn't really like very much because things that are explained can be explained away as lies and things that draw crowds, draw crowds away from him. So there's that. But this piece, as much as I'm not a fan of J.D. Vance, especially with the flip-flop, it really was, it really was sort of an interesting character before, and now the flip-flop, which he explains, which I give him props for you know, owning up to that, not exactly who I'd call somebody I'm really looking forward to rooting for. In the meantime, CNN and its need to get eyeballs, need to um, get ratings, need to make money, put out what was literally a hit piece on J.D. Vance. Why J.D. Vance? Because he's semi in the headlines. He probably won't make that vice president list at the, in, the, in, the, in the end also. He probably won't actually be the guy that they had to worry about being on stage and on, on TV going forward if Trump wins. J.D. Vance actually does a lot of appearances on CNN, so that's something also kind of weird. So he'll probably continue to do that. One thing you see a lot of folks in the news media goes to, I mean, you'll see this for Fox stuff, Democrats that are often on the Fox News or conservative news media because they get exposure. 
they deal with being pounded and then they show up for the meet for those interviews. Sometimes they're cordial, sometimes they're not, but they get that exposure. You see that a lot going on. Um, especially with Republicans that are now showing up no, more or less on CNN now because of the Fox rift. But J.D. Vance um, got some this treatment yesterday from Aaron Burnett uh, out front, which I'm going to say I'm not thrilled with. I'm going to say I'm not happy with. And as a fan of CNN, because it's basically my main source, it is my prime source of news. It's always on, and I flip the other ones to see perspective. And a fan of Aaron Burnett, who I've uh, been watched since her CNBC days and watched her come over there and wonder how she's going to do, and I think she's done great. This, this show's been on for over a decade or so. Not a good look. Not a great thing for CNN. It just isn't good. And a place where people are not only talking rumors and you window, but sometimes flat out getting the, the, the details on how the, the network is not doing so great in the ratings, not doing so great with its actual news coverage, and just needs a little boost of something. This wasn't a great thing going forward. And the fact that they essentially proved my point for X, or proved the point that X had against me having it, it's a whole other thing. So, there we have it. Operation Chaos continues. I still have not gotten down to tearing down the computer because well, we hadn't quite got the setup yet ready to move it over there. Plus, you know, without having the, the not having the, the reality of having a pathway to do these things, we're still kind of figuring out how we're going to do this. I can't, literally cannot take the time to read through a, a day and a half worth of, of scrolling through to see what the numbers are and then kind of doing them on an abacus. I kind of need to download so it helps me out. In the meantime, uh, thank you for all the support, all the emails, all of the um, X's and the replies that I got yesterday. From the video yesterday, it's talking about how Elon Musk has officially killed uh, the conversation project. Not quite true, but uh, thank you so much for folks who are saying, hey, keep going uh, and having the words of encouragement. That's awesome. I need a little extra help from you guys, though. I also need you to step up and do a little help for me. So if you can go to our website, this is theconversationproject.com. I don't have that set up here on, on the slides here, so unfortunately, I can't pull it up here. But go to the website and engage in what we have going on. Find out what we can do together. I'm needing you guys to step up and you guys to do a little bit. Looking for some folks to um, become partners. It's the partners page is there. S visit some of our sponsors. It's going to be hard to get out their sponsors without having videos and sponsorships, stuff like this. And of course, make sure you're following us on as many socials as possible. Keep following us on X. We'll figure it out. But follow us on Facebook. We'll figure it out as well. And follow us on TikTok. TikTok is what we're going to really start working on because I think we've got to do a lot more of those little quick hits. If you're watching this one, this is on YouTube. So keep looking. Make sure you have us. Click the notifications button bell so you can see what's going on click like a few times because we need that and of course watch out for shorts because that's where a lot of these things will come on going forward thank you so much for being a part of the conversation project in whatever fashion iteration you are thank you so much for the love and encouragement you're giving to me thank you so much because this thing is the thing that's going to keep me sane through a whole lot of other chaos including the operation chaos of the house love you mean it Stay strong, stay hydrated, stay on task, all the things I usually say in things you might have heard. And we'll see if I'm going to have a daily short video on one topic or what, because I don't know. The conversation project falls apart when you're not doing many topics. We'll see. But in the meantime, thank you. We'll make it work.